Thursday, June 1st. Market analysis, Stan Ehrlich. We have a very strong update today, making some new significant bull market progress in the stock market indexes. We also have some brand new signals in the futures markets. We'll get to those in a moment. The S&P 500 is what I start out with. Typically, the daily data chart, here it comes. And we have the potential of a new high closing price for the trend since the October 13th low, which was an ER bullish engulfing buy signal. And there it is, and it turns it green automatically. Now, we're not overbought, so there's upside room as far as the oscillator is concerned. And this is a custom RSI. I learned RSI from Wells Lauder himself. And <clears throat> we're at previous rally highs from only two days ago. And almost making a new high for the whole trend since, what will this be now? This will be a new high since August 19th of 22. Quite a while. So, uh, also a comment, the highest high since over a year ago is not much higher than the price range that was in August of 22. So that price is going to be at 432 in a small fraction. And all we have to do is get above the recent high here to get into one of the last resistance areas, and that's above 422.58. So they're awful close to each other and could happen in a matter of a day or two or three. The quicker it happens, by the way, the more likely I am to scream bloody murder, blow off top, look out, it's about to turn around for a little while. To me, a little while would be a few weeks. So... The downside correction I was looking for to 414 missed by two points. The low yesterday uh, was about 1615-ish. So today's low is a little higher than yesterday's low. It opened a little higher on the day, came down and didn't make any lower lows, turned right around, and we are now basically high and last for the rally, up three and three-quarter points at the moment. There's not much more to go to pushing a new high ground for this whole year, which I'm looking forward to and have been talking about again and again and again since really October 13th. Uh, that's when I scream bloody murder. And you don't see a low for a year and period for like, what? Once a year. That's about it. And we picked that one. All right. Enough said. Bullish. Looking forward to new highs. Maybe going up a little too fast here this morning, but it's only three and three quarter points, remember, not a crazy eight, nine, 12, or something like that. So there's elbow room, and we're not overbought on the daily data chart either. It's just that we topped out a few days ago in this ballpark, and that is a little bit of a resistance area in a minor sense, not super. Okay. DIA got lower than yesterday's low and higher than yesterday's high, making it a bullish engulfing buy signal from a Japanese candlestick point of view pattern-wise. Also, the low of the RSI within the last several days has almost been where my oversold condition is, 25 or lower. It got down to 25.31, I believe. Super, super close. And therefore, it didn't turn it yellow because it wasn't oversold. And that was the date of the 25th of last month. So this bullish engulfing has almost every credibility I would want to make it turn green. But our code is code. It doesn't say, oh, gee, we're close. So we'll do this. It's either black or white. Therefore, this is damn near a great buy signal at the moment but I can't claim it's officially an ER buy signal. It's just super close to it. That implies to me that the Dow is maybe gonna start getting stronger, quicker than the QQQ, for example. And here we go with the daily data on the Qs, much like the spider. It's almost as high as a couple of days ago, which was the highest high for the trend. But unlike the spider, the Qs are overbought for the fourth day in a row. 
but it looks like we've regained a little momentum. So I'm not going to be surprised if in the next day or two or hours, we do see higher highs. And for the Qs, that means you're going to be higher than April 7th. Mm, yeah. And there's an old gap, the blue zone here, to close way back in April. Uh, it looks like April 4th, April 5th, something like that. Yeah, I think that's it. April 4th, 6th. So uh, I will not be surprised if this resistance level, the top of the gap at 360 and a third uh, is a minor resistance level and starts something back down again. I'm really looking for a turn down on the queues because four days in a row overbought. I don't think, just a moment, please. The low today, which is 346.66, is lower than 51. No, 346.51 yesterday. Therefore, it is not a bullish engulfing. Fine. That's enough for the stock market index is I'm looking for higher and higher and higher. I've been saying for many months now, S&P 500 new historic highs by the end of the year. And now let's look at futures. All right. The Spider and the E-mini are the same for all practical purposes, except remember, the E-mini is able to trade a lot more hours every day than the SPY. Therefore, there are different individual daily signals and slight differences in various formations that they develop. But the bigger formations are almost always in both uh, indexes on the daily data charts. So I'm looking for new highs here, obviously, very, very quickly. Next chart is bonds. Ten-year notes, sorry. They're coming up into a little resistance, but as I've been saying... In an oversold condition, we should be turning around, which we have done. Now we're back up to the resistance area, which I talked about. And I do think there's a very good chance we're going to swing right through this all the way up to the red resistance area around 117 and a half ish. But closing at 118 or higher, especially on a big, strong, high volume up day for a major bullish breakout, would be exactly that a major bullish breakout and the perpetuation of a long-term bull trend and in interest rate futures in general. Now for bond, I must've missed the bonds somehow. Where are the bonds? Hmm. I'll get to bonds. Sorry about that. Same kind of commentary though. If you've been listening to me, crude oil support held a few weeks ago, bounced back pretty darn good. Even after it made a minor new low. Now we're bouncing a little bit from almost oversold. Looks like a little bit more of a trading range may developed than I was uh, expecting and hoping for. I thought we would go right through 65 and lower, but I've got to pull that comment back a little bit. We're back up to resistance. I don't see any bearish resistance. Uh, I meant um, signals, daily price action. We're neutral, very neutral at 46 in the RSI. So it could rally a little bit more, but the major trend is down. So I am looking for a sell signal sometime soon. Next chart is heating oil. Same commentary exactly here, but I have to add, if it goes through that yellow dash horizontal line um, at 2.13-ish, you got a gigantic major long-term bearish breakout. I wouldn't be surprised if it was oversold in the process of doing it, but that's very common on major breakouts. So... That won't surprise me, but it does mean that within a couple of days more, probably a sharp down movement, you'll get more oversold and then bounce. Next, we got natural gas, and it's doing almost exactly what I just explained. We're in a downside breakout today. Natural gas had a bearish engulfing on 525 just a week ago. And has been down one, two, three, four, five days today, every day since that bearish engulfing in the natural gas. We had a small bullish buy signal. It worked out very nicely for several days. And that's what it, these signals are originally built for swing trading. But I can and I do pick very short term scalps with these signals. And as you have seen, quote, October 13th, unquote, sometimes they are huge major, profound, long-term turning points to the exact day. I try to scream bloody murder when I think that's happening, but it's a little um, difficult. Next, 
I'm looking for lower levels, obviously, uh, but we're starting to get oversold. And that was, again, for natural gas. Okay, maybe a little bit of bounce in the next couple of days. Tomorrow's Friday, probably more downside tomorrow, and then maybe early next week, a little bounce. Next, gold, silver, and platinum. We picked the lows in all three of these, uh, February 28th for gold, 27th for silver, I believe, and platinum was March 10th, or maybe I guess silver and platinum are reversed. Anyway, bottom, hell of a rally, nice break into and through support, and we had a buy signal official a few days ago, and we picked up an ER3 today at almost exactly the low of the day, and it's almost high in last and a new high since the first buy signal. This is a complementary or secondary buy signal in gold. We have had some fantastic signals in gold in the last year or two. This major bottom over here, this major bottom right here, that minor selling point right there, that major top right there, and that bottom, major bottom right there. Next chart is silver. All right, we picked up the bottom of the silver market on March 10th. We also picked up the two highs of a double top formation at almost exactly the same prices, and then a complementary sell signal and a crash immediately. This double top formation had a minimum downside objective uh, at that horizontal blue line, which is about 2290-ish. For only one day and a fraction, we had the market get to that price level and a little bit lower. Guess what? oversold conditions, and we have a bullish engulfing at the bottom with ER3 getting on board two days later. And today is a new high by a substantial amount and a highly likely new high close since our buy signals. This is just absolutely dead perfect again. I'm sorry. The next signal won't be as good as these. I just don't see that coming. Next. Um, Platinum, we caught the bottom. This was the 27th of February to the exact day. The previous top to the exact day, a few good signals earlier. The sell signal did, did not work out very well. And unfortunately, at the moment, we do not have any buy signals. But we did get oversold yesterday and today it's starting to rally. So I am looking for this market to bottom out because I think silver and gold are going to head north. And I don't think platinum is going to be left behind unless otherwise circumstances particular to platinum, maybe catalytic converter stuff, whatever. So I'm um, looking for the, a turn up here out of this over condition. Unfortunately, no green buy signal yet. We still have a few days. We might be able to get one high grade copper, little rally in a bear trend. Looking for it to stop rallying. Hopefully we'll get a sell signal about 3.81, 3.82. Next. Soybeans and grains. Got oversold yesterday, bouncing back somewhat. <coughs> Excuse me. I wouldn't be surprised if it were, to, if it were able to come up to 1375-ish, my little dot of resistance line here. And that would be the next week or so. But I'm expecting it to turn back down again. That's a substantial historical resistance. Next, bean oil. Same kind of commentary here. We've got oversold for a day. It's rallying at the moment. There's plenty of resistance areas at different points on the way up. And I see no reason to believe that this is any kind of a long-term bottom. Soybean meal, same comments. Got oversold for several days in a row. And uh, has turned up today. So I'm expecting a little bit more minor short-term rally, maybe a few days worth a week. And then it's a turn down to make new lows to the trend. Next chart is corn. And we are starting to slip back down after three out of the last four days, having highs almost at the exact same level, which is kind of in a resistance level. Not very well defined, if you ask me, but still it's there. I didn't put any colored zone in, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm looking for new lows fairly soon. But wheat is a different story, people. On purpose this morning, I loaded 10 years of historical data on wheat. We just got down within 10 cents, I think it was 10 cents lower on this continuation contract than the lows that were way back in 
May of 19, uh, 2019. And of course, that's way before the war. We sold the high day at the beginning of the war. We bought the low day, for Christ's sake, um, in May of 19, after the bear market ended and the beginning of the bull market. That's equivalent to my October 13th for the stock market indexes. And if you go back in time even further, and then we're looking all the way back there 10 years now, that low was in fact the low for years prior. Next chart is live cattle. Oh, 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 the wheat. We might, and I don't have any evidence of this yet, have hit yesterday a profound, very big, very important long term bottom around 570. <clears throat> um, don't see anything to support that comment except for major historical support and uh, having been oversold with a buy signal that did not work very well uh, a couple of months, a uh, few weeks ago. It did work for four days, three days. So there was plenty of profit potential. I remember, originally developed a swing trade to begin with, and that was a great swing trade. We do get other buy signals frequently in major tops and bottoms. So I'm not going to be surprised in the next weeks to come that we don't get one, two, three more green bullish engulfing daily buy signals. There's the chance that I'm talking about a low here that's going to last for a long, long, long time. Next, cattle. Does the phrase blow off top stampede come to mind? Look at this huge rally today in cattle. Uh, we are in a blow-off situation. This is absolutely no way in hell a place to be buying. If you were long, you're lucky as hell, and you should be raising your stops very tight and uh, crossing your fingers so it doesn't gap down the next trading day and you go right through a lot of your stops. That would not be fun. Uh, I was a broker 35 years. I know. All right. So. Um, blow off top. I can't help it. What is the RSI currently at the high? 88, 89, almost at 90. We hardly ever get up to 90. The last time we did, okay, was back here at 92. And we had a bearish engulfing ER cell signal that lasted for, oh, two or three weeks. And maybe a little longer than that. It wasn't the huge, profound self-signal I was kind of hoping for. But look how often it gets to 90. It just doesn't. Okay, I'm going to go with 10 years and put my horizontal line on the oscillator at, at uh, 90. And I can see one, almost, two or three. This one was a huge, important long-term top. This one was a very good, major important top and a bearish engulfing sell signal. And by the way, we got one little red line a day or two after the top there on the overbought and on the rally high there. So all three of these tops had bearish engulfings either at the high day or extremely close to the high day. And all of them are in 90s. This is it. This is a blow off top in live cattle. What can I say? You got to say it when you see it before it happens. Next chart, live hogs, very oversold, down uh, to almost 10. I could probably say the exact same thing in reverse for hogs. Doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me, but um, that's the way it is. Extreme oversold conditions, oversold around 10 or maybe even lower. I don't know exactly how low that guy. It looks like 11 and a fraction, close enough, and... I'll have to keep an eye on this. Didn't get an official green buy signal, but this resistance level here at 92 is going to be very important. If it gets up there, stalls out, pulls back down again, and comes up a second time and goes through that, we probably have a bull trend on our hands. Next chart. And I'm not implying yet as I am in cattle, point blank, but close that this could be a major bottom in hogs for some reason. I just can't pin it down yet. Next is OJ, overbought, down, minor downside correction, probably ready to 
attempt to make new highs for the move. We've got cocoa. We've got this head and shoulder top I was looking at since three days ago with the bearish engulfing. But now we've gotten a little higher than I'd like. It's not terrible yet. Any moment this market crashes below the blue line, which is still a relevant trend line, if you don't want to call it a neckline, and they're both the same kind of thing, just used for different purposes, almost the same purposes, but slightly different. And if it breaks below that on a closing basis, like today or just opens sideways and goes lower on Friday, we will have a head and shoulder top. Next, cotton is brand new. Had one of my subscribers say, hey, you forgot cotton. And I'm sorry I did. We've got some interesting situations here. Big sideways trading range is not very interesting and it's boring. So I'm sorry to say cotton has been doing nothing for quite a while since November. But look at some of these signals. We've got the bottom of the market back in July 22. We also got a sell signal before that break in the first shoulder. And if you haven't seen these before, this is a double shoulder, head and shoulder top. You have the first rally high right here. You've got the second rally high right here. That's the shoulder and the second shoulder. This is the head of the formation. All three, by the way, were overbought. We've got the first shoulder starting to come down right here. And then the second and last shoulder right here at lower levels, classic. The neckline is slightly upward slanted, classic. And when we broke below the neckline, you're doing exactly what it should have done and did do. Crash like a crazy. This one just fell apart. The minimum downside objective was uh, here at 87 and the third. It only took it a couple of weeks to come all the way down to that level. And once it got there, it had a bullish engulfing buy signal that worked like crazy. Come on. Now, this is my last chart before we go back to the spider. Or I'm sorry, sugar is. Sugar got overbought for an extended period of time. One, you know, occasional problem with the RSI. It does last much too long, and you get very, very frustrated during these periods. But if you don't make a stupid mistake, you don't lose anything. And then they start to kick in really nicely as usual. So neutral to slightly bearish for a little while here on sugar, but I'm not sure that this bull market is over yet. Next chart and back to bonds, the last one. I mentioned with 10-year notes, resistance area has been reached. I looked for this market to go up into this resistance area and challenge the 133, 134 plus and break out at probably 135 on a closing basis and start a major long-term bull move. And I think that could happen relatively soon. You guys have a great day. Signing off.